This section of the course is going to walk through how we can leverage JavaScript to work with the DOM. And the DOM is what is called the document object model. So if we write out DOM, it is just an acronym for document object model. And the keyword that I want to emphasize here, because this speaks directly to the JavaScript programming language, is object. So when you were learning about JavaScript and you learned about this data structure called the object, it may have seemed like it wasn't really needed or it didn't really connect with how it was important and how you're going to be able to use it in your own development. And so I hope you paid attention then because now we are going to dive into how objects are used in JavaScript specifically in how they're used for browser-based development and application development. So I'm going to walk through a quick review of how objects work in JavaScript. So if I created a user here, so I'm going to say const user, and I'm just going to create a plain object here. They're going to have a name. They can have a email address. And then they can also have a list of items. So I could say favorites and give some favorite restaurants like Chipotle and Chick-fil-A, which are two of my daughter's favorite restaurants. And so if I have these, I have a user object. And so if I want to see what this user looks like, I could do something like this where I say user and you can see there that the user gives me the output here on the right hand side of the full object as its name attribute as an email and favorites and I, if i want to drill down to the data i could say user dot email and then this is going to output the email address if i say user dot name this is going to show me the name and if you've never seen how I'm rendering the JavaScript code out here in line, I'm using the Quokka plugin, which you can use with your own text editors, but I found that it works quite well inside of VS Code, uh, but that's beside the point. So right here, you can see that we have the ability to call an object and then call the attributes of that object. And we can take it even further than this. So if I say user.favorites, then this is going to give me that array. So I have an array that says Chipotle and Chick-fil-A, and I can treat this like a regular array. So I could say user.favorites1, and then if I want to see what the output of that is, you can see that that is Chick-fil-A. So I have leveraged this object. I've traversed it all the way down through the object, through the array list, and then picked out a specific element. If you know how to do this, I have good news for you. You know how to work with the document object model. And that is one of the biggest key requirements when it comes to implementing JavaScript inside of the browser. I'm going to show you why now. So let's switch to the browser. And I have Daily Smarty open here, but you could really follow along with any website. I'm going to pop open the JavaScript console here. And now if I type document and hit return, this gives me a document object. And so I could click on this. You can see that it highlights everything. But all that I'm doing here is the way that the browser takes all the HTML code. It takes all of it in, and then it generates this object, very similar to how we just built out that user object. So we have the document, which is the root, and then we have a, all of this HTML. So we have the document, we have the body, so each one of these item, items like the container, the script tags, all of those kinds of things are inside of the object, just like our user had the name and email and the favorite restaurants, it's the same thing with the document object. And so we can drill down even more. So I could say document dot location, which is another attribute inside of the document object model. And from there, I could do something like, say, href. And if I run this, you can see that gives me the full URL. I could look at some of the other items. So I could say protocol. That shows that it's HTTP. If I switch to a different website, so if I open up the Wall Street Journal, 
and perform the same type of query. I can say document location. That brings me, as you can see right here on the left-hand side, that brings me an object. And if you want to look at it, you can see it has all kinds of elements. It has host, host name, href, which is what we queried on the Daily Smarty side, has the path name, and then it has the protocol. So see, all we're doing here is we are treating the document. We're treating the document that's the website exactly the same way that we treated this user object. And that is why it's so critical to understand how objects work in JavaScript, because if you understand that part, everything else is gonna make so much more sense because you're gonna be able to realize that every element on this website or on any website is just some type of object in order to get access to it, you simply have to traverse your way down the object model. So if I scroll down here and I type the exact same thing, so I could say document location dot protocol, you'll see that here it returns HTTPS because they use an SSL certificate on their site versus when we did on Daily Smarty where it was just in plain text. And so that is how you can see that there's actually a difference between those sites. And that's cool, but that's still kind of boring. Let's get into some more fun stuff. So now let's go and I'm going to look Look at document dot body and so what this is going to do is it's going to select that body tag which is everything on the page and so if I click here you can see this has the nav bar the container and then all of the JavaScript elements right there and so we also have access to grab any of the attributes inside of there so if I say document body dot and then I could say parent element and run this, you can see that this actually goes up the chain. It goes up the chain in the object model, and instead of just bringing back the body the way it did here, it brings back the entire HTML document. So it goes up one notch in the chain, and it grabs the parent element, which is the entire HTML document. And so that is one other example of what you can grab. Now, we also can grab elements inside of here, and this is going to be something we're going to be doing quite a bit inside of the projects and the exercises in this course. So if I come to the inspector, and I come and click on one of these elements, you can see that I have all kinds of HTML code here. So I have this div with a class of topics, I have a div with a class of metadata for the user thumbnail, all kinds of different elements. And whatever site that you're using, you're gonna see things that are slightly different, but they still are gonna be similar. So I wanna grab these topics right here. So if I come back here, what I can do is say document dot and then get elements by class name. And then I can pass in the class name of topics just like I have right here. And now if I run this, you can see that I have all of the topics, each one of the topics on the page. So that would be what I have here, here, each one of these different topics are going to be brought back to me in an object. So I have this collection and then inside of it, I have all of these nested ones. So I have all of the links, how many child nodes they have, what their values are, everything. So right here you can see front end development and so, and then cheat sheet you can see that that's exactly what we have. So we're able to select those right on the page. And so that is something that is incredibly helpful whenever you're wanting to perform some type of task on an element. Imagine that you're wanting to intercept a click. So you want to know when a user has clicked on a button and then you wanna perform some other action. Well, before you do anything, you first have to find that button. And so performing tasks like getting an element by a class name is a way of doing that. Now, one thing you may have noticed, when I ran this, this brought us back a collection. It brought us back a collection of 20 items, and that's helpful, but we actually may need to drill down even more. And as you may notice, we have brackets around these topics. And if you remember back to your JavaScript programming classes, then you would know that that means that we have an array of topics. And so because of that, we can treat it like an array. 
just like how we were able to treat the favorite restaurants like an array because that's all it was. It was an array inside of the object. We can do the same thing here. So if I run the same code again, but say I want to select the element with an ID of two, I can run that. And now you see, I do not get an HTML collection back, but instead I get a div. And if I scroll down here, it'll even show it as I highlight it, that it's bringing back this JavaScript and key codes div. So I can click on that. And now you can see I have the real HTML code right here. It shows JavaScript and key codes all because we found the element by the class name and then we queried it using just the standard bracket syntax. And now we're not done yet. The cool thing about working with the document object model is that you're able to traverse it however you need. And so we're going to keep on going down even further. So right now we have the entire div, but now let's say that we want to get even more detailed. If we call dot children after the two, you can see that this brings us back a nested collection. So this brings back another array and it's gonna contain these two elements. So as you can see, this now gives us each one of these. We have one at the zero index and then this one right here is going, if we go keep on going all the way down, you can see that the inner HTML attribute is set to JavaScript. And if we look all the way down at the next one, so this is one with an index of one, and we look at the inner HTML there, it's key codes, which is exactly what we see right there. So everything is working properly, but we still can go even further. We can perform tasks such as calling length on this. And this can tell us that if we ran a query like this, we're not gonna know how many elements are there. So say that we're running some kind of check to make sure that an element exists on a page, we could check to make sure that the length is greater than zero. So we know that there are two Two links inside of there and now let's actually just grab the children and then grab the first element which we know is JavaScript we can treat it once again like an array so this is going to grab us that first link and then our final item that we're going to do in this demo is I want to actually just grab the text here and so I can do that by saying dot text if I run that we have traversed all the way through, and let's review here. We have the document, which we started at. From there, we looked at every class on the page and said, bring me back all the topics. That brought us back an array of all of those topics. From there, we picked out the topic with an index of two. We picked out its children, and then we picked out the very first children that has an ID of zero or an index of zero. And then we asked for its text value. So we were able to go all the way from this giant document with all of these kinds of keys and attributes, and we we're able to treat it like a standard object, the same exact way that we treated this user object where we were able to start at the user, traverse down each one of the attributes and then pick out the data we wanted, we're able to do the same thing right here. And so this is gonna be one of the most foundational concepts to understand when it comes to working with JavaScript in the browser.